Hello and welcome to today's interview where I'm going to be interviewing Aubrey Studios 82. Say hello. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm Jonathan. I'm an animator on YouTube. I work with uh, Legos actually and I've got about 90,000 subscribers and I've been doing it for about ooh, probably, oh man, about to be five years. It's pretty hard to believe. So. Oh wait, did you say Legos? I've never heard someone pronounce it like that actually. Yes. Well, some people say Lego, some people say Legos. I've always said Legos. I think Lego is the correct term when you're talking about like plural, but yeah, I don't really. Oh, because I always say Legos. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. It's, wait, how do you say it? Lego. Lego? Lego? Yeah, Lego. I say Lego, and then if it's plural, I say Legos. Oh, that's what I, yeah, okay. That's what I do too. Yeah. I've, I've heard some people say that it's wrong to say Legos and it's some other way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I Some people, it, that's been a debate that has gone on for a very long time time i've i've never really cared i feel like lego probably is the correct term but i i'm not gonna stop saying legos because that's that's just what i'm used to so right yeah you know <laughs> uh yeah debate of the century for sure <laughs> For sure. So I guess we can transition to the first question. So when did you start YouTube, uh, Jonathan? Uh, I started it and let's see, I think that was the spring of 2013, I want to say. I don't know, the fact that I don't know probably speaks volumes, but I, th I think it was 2013. <laughs> um, because I was in middle school and I remember starting it just for the sole purpose of uh, joining this this like film festival that my school district was currently doing in order to submit something you had to upload your video to YouTube first and I, didn't, I never had a channel so I just I made that and then I uploaded the video which wasn't even stop motion I remember it was a, this crappy thing I made with go animate um and and that was that was actually my first video I, I should probably privatize that at some point but I think it's still up so that's that's when I made it at least Right, so um, why why the name Aubrey Studios? Uh, well, Aubrey's actually my middle name. I know it's like it's like a girl name, but that's that's kind of what I decided to go with. I probably could have been more creative back then, but at this point, I'm like I'm in too deep to change it. So it's uh it's just how it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, because I was I was like confused. I'm like, is his name Jonathan or is it Aubrey? Yeah, and I, I, I get people calling me Aubrey all the time. It really doesn't matter to me because Aubrey technically is my name as well. I mean, it's just, I can understand the confusion, you know. Some people use their first names in their, uh, in their, in their channel name, especially in the, in the Lego community. Like, there's Akash Lego Productions and people like that. So, it's def it can be confusing, for sure. Yeah, do you know the YouTuber uh, Forest Fire 101? I do, yeah. I've worked with him a couple times in the past. He's great. Yeah, I love his animations. They're great. Yeah, he he was one of the main people who inspired me. But he's great. You started in middle school, and you've been doing it for five years now. So I assume you're either like finishing up high school or like uh, into college right now. Mm -hmm. Well, this is my senior year of high school, so I'll be going into college. Uh, later this year in August, and I'm I'm not really sure what's gonna happen to the channel when that happens because like, you know, even now I barely have enough time to keep putting out these stop motions on a somewhat consistent basis. So it's like once I go off to university and I'm busy doing that, I I don't know how often I'll be able to put out stop motions. But that's just gonna have to we'll, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there at least. So, but for for the time being. You know, I'm still I'm still like in high school and I'm still plugging away making these stop motions uh, as often as I can. So right, yeah. Um, well, obviously stop motions take a an immense amount of time to make. Obviously, yeah, you can't be pumping out daily videos or nothing like that. Um, and yeah, obviously with college, I'm sure that'll be way worse because obviously the workload with college is way worse than it is with high school. Yeah. I'm just, I'll have to be prepared for that, but it, I'm sure it'll be fine. Now, is there any other reason besides you wanting to enter this uh, film festival that you made your YouTube channel, or is that the only reason? Um, At the time, not really. I, I never really, when I was like, because I was like 13 when that, when that was happening, and I didn't really have any intention to start like posting a whole lot on my channel. I really just wanted to upload that. And uh, it was just, it was later when I started doing the stop motions, just, just kind of, kind of spur of the moment thing. But at the time, no, it was, it was only for the stop motion or not, sorry, for the, uh, for the film festival. So 
And I'm tired. I'm going on about four hours of sleep. But Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> time did you go to bed last night? On uh, I don't think I fell asleep till about four ish. I don't know, I was talking to my girlfriend really late, and then we didn't actually go to sleep till a bit later, so. Now, did you just get started with the stop motion animations on YouTube, or did you do anything else as well when you started? I uh, know, it was just kind of, apart from the film festival thing, it was, it just was kind of right into the stop motion part of it, and, um, I, I don't really know, I never really had any, well, I mean, I, like I said, I didn't really have any other plans to make any other videos at the time so it, it was kind of the stop motion was like the only thing I ever did and it's the only thing I've ever done really besides uh I, I've done like I used to have a podcast but that didn't really go anywhere and not like I really expected it to um and so it's like that that's kind of that's that's all it's really been it's just the stop motion stuff right so what got you into lego um well it's like i've always like been into i mean i've always collected lego i've always been interested in it it's it's been like a thing that i've i've liked ever since i was a young kid and that's where a lot of my legos are from or or like they're they're pieces and sets and stuff that i've had since i was really young and that's at least what i started using when i started doing stop motions the whole reason I started doing stop motions um, was because, like, um, I, I wanted to tell stories and stuff, and you know, and the easiest way for me to do that at the time was just with the Legos that I currently had. So it wasn't really that I was completely into Lego at the time of me um, putting out animations and stuff. It was just, like, the most convenient thing. Yeah, I got into Lego at a very young age. I have so many sets. It, it's incredible. Yeah, I used to have a ton of Star Wars stuff. I, I actually don't have... I think I have, like, one Star Wars set, and that's it. Which one is it? Oh, dear. I don't remember. Yeah, that's fine. It could it could have been that significant, then. Yeah. it's a, It was a relatively big one, though, but I don't remember who's in it or what it is or anything like that because I got it, like back in 2010 as a Christmas gift. So uh, at what age did you start uh, building and playing with Legos? Uh, I don't really know the specific age. I just remember always liking Lego. I used to get like the old Lego Batman sets from like 2006, I remember. So I guess it was around then was at least when I when I was buying stuff or when I, when I was like, when I was at least collecting uh, things along those lines. So Right, so 12 years ago, you'd say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty reasonable. Now, what was your first Lego set? Oh, no, man, I don't even remember. That's that's really hard. I know, like I said, one of the first ones I had was uh, the, the giant, like, Lego Batman Batcave or whatever that I still use in my videos. I still use, like, the computer screen or whatever. I use that pretty frequently that came from that set back in 2006. I don't remember the exact first set I had because that was just so long ago, but I remember that was definitely, that was one of them. So it's one of the earliest ones I can remember, at least. Right. Now, how many sets uh, would you say you own in total? Ooh, ooh that, that's, uh, that's kind of... Mm, that's really hard to say as well, because like I have, I have a lot of sets. Um, well, I have a few sets in my room that are still intact, that are still like all together. They're over on a shelf that I kind of display them. But those are the ones I kind of got recently. All, the, all my older ones, uh, a lot of them that, I, that I've used in videos, I've kind of like broken down for pieces and stuff to just like build other sets uh, with. And so now I don't, I couldn't really say. Um, maybe an estimate would be, I don't know, not, uh, maybe like, maybe 70 to 80, quite a bit, but... Uh, it's just because I've been collecting them for such a long time, so. And, I, of course, I've sold a few as well, so. I, I've never sold any of mine, um, because some of them are, aren't intact, and, um, I don't have the boxes or anything like that, so. Yeah, if you've got the boxes or instruction manuals, I know those can, uh, definitely get you more money if you, if you ever try to sell them, so. Yeah, I, I'm... I don't know if I still have the manuals. Maybe I do. I'm not too sure. Well, you know, you can also get a ton of money off the minifigures as well if you just want to sell those by themselves. Certain figures can go for like 12 to $20 online. It's pretty insane. I've never really checked, um, but um, if I were to sell them, I'd probably sell them on eBay or so. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be a pretty good place. Yeah, but I don't know if I'd ever like personally buy something like that for like 12 or $20. I don't think I would. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I don't blame you. I've, I've had to do that in the past just a little bit if I need like a specific figure for 
a scene or for like a video that I'm doing, but it, it always pains me to have to make that purchase because it is really overpriced. Yeah, if I were to pay for something like that, it'd be like one to five dollars. That sounds reasonable for a little Lego minifigure. That 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 would be reasonable, yeah. But unfortunately, that wouldn't get you very far, which is really sad. But that's just that's how it is. Yeah. So, what would you say your favorite kind of Lego set is? And what I by, what I mean by that, like what franchise, like Star Wars? Oh, like what what theme? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, well, when I was a kid, I was really I was really into like the Star Wars stuff. So I've got like a ton of Star Wars sets that um that are just kind of like sitting around. And that's because, like, now, you know, I, just, I make Batman videos for the most part. So I would, I'd probably say that that's my favorite theme overall, um, especially because they've been making some pretty good sets recently that I've been able to incorporate into my videos. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, guess, I guess, yeah, Batman or, like, DC superheroes, those would probably be two of my favorite themes. So. Yeah, I I'd, I had a ton of Batman ones, I remember. I had the uh, big Arkham Asylum set like with over a thousand pieces or something like that I, yeah i loved it yeah 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 i remember that yeah they've made a they've made a couple of those yeah i i think i had the the newest one though i didn't have the really old one from 2006 yeah 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 the more recent one it's the one you had okay that makes sense yeah yeah and um i had a bunch of like other franchises like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, I think I had, uh, like, a few of the robots. They weren't Bionicles. They were called something else. I don't remember what they were called. No, they were, um... Oh, man, I forget what they were called. I know what you're talking about. I haven't... I used to have, like, one, um, but I, I don't remember the name. Yeah, neither do uh, I. Something... I think it was, like, Nexo Knights or something. I don't know. That sounds familiar. What is that? No, they weren't Nexo Knights, actually. I don't remember the name. Right, let me look it up. What are Nexo Knights? Oh wait, Nexo Knights are something different. Never mind. That's like a different Lego theme. Um, yeah, I don't know, but they, I know what you're talking about. They're very similar to Bionicles. Yeah. Now, what would you say is the easiest or hard and hardest Lego set you've built? Uh, ooh, let's see. The the easiest one? I don't I don't really know off the top of my head. It'd probably be just one of those like really small like either battle packs or like poly bags or what they're called, um, where it just comes with like. Just a couple pieces, like a little mini build and like a mini figure. Uh, maybe something like that would be one of the easier ones. But the hardest one I've ever built would probably be the the Death Star that I got like uh, back when I was in middle school ish. Because I remember saving up so much money for that. It was like it was four hundred dollars at the time. Um, so, and that that thing came with like three thousand pieces, and it took me like a week to finish. But that's that's definitely the biggest set I have, and it would probably be the most difficult to build that I've ever done. So, yeah, would you ever get like angry when you couldn't like build it? Like I would, I get really upset. Yeah, it can. Be, <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's definitely a. It can be a tedious act. I remember trying to put in, trying to install the elevator into that set was really difficult because it had like strings and stuff, and I'm just like, no, no, thank you. Like that's not something I want to deal with. <laughs> Really, it had strings. I I've never seen a Lego set with strings. Yeah, yeah, because it was like I I don't think I, it it was like there there would be like it was like a pulley system almost. So once you once you rigged it up to like actually work, um, you installed these like knobs that you could turn and like it would like move the string that would then move the platform it's attached to that would be the actual elevator and it could move figures up to different levels of the Death Star. It's kind of hard to describe, but it was such a pain to, to try to build, I remember. Right. Now, let's transition into talking about uh, your stop-motion animations. Now, how long would you say it takes you to make one of those, on average? Um. Well, it just it depends for, like, uh, how long of a video I'm working on. But for, for, like, a standard Batman episode, which is about 10 to 15 minutes in length, that can take anywhere from... Uh, I don't know, three weeks to a couple months. It just depends on how busy I, busy I am at the time. Um, it used to take me a lot quicker, but now with like school, like kind of kind of ramping up, you know, senior year, it, it can take a, a a bit longer. So, I I remember one of my more recent Batman videos, the Christmas video I did. Um, that was that only took about three weeks, but that's because I really pushed myself. 
uh, to try to get it out before Christmas because I like, had a, kind of a deadline. And then compare that to like a different video I did a couple months ago, which was uh, just a random like Lego Batman episode. And I wasn't really as motivated to finish that one. And I think that ended up being around two months to make, even though if I had really pushed myself, it, it probably could have been done in just a couple weeks, similar to the Christmas one. So it just it really just depends. Right. How many pictures do you take for like each one? Um, again, it would probably depend because I, I do 15 FPS, which means 15 frames per second. And, uh, so, so it, you'd have to like, just do the math on that. Um, which I'm terrible at math. So I probably wouldn't be able to do that off the top of my head. <laughs> um, but for like what a, a 15 minute video, um, that, that, that would be 15 frames per second. Uh, I essentially, so you know the people listening can do the math if they want but that 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 adds up to be quite a few pictures don't get me wrong so yeah my cousin used to make them as a little kid but not with legos he'd use like his transformer toys and he said it'd take him forever oh yeah 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 i've known people who have done trans transformers or like even action figures and stuff and no matter what you're working with stop motion will take a, a ton of time and a ton of pictures so just kind of has to be prepared yeah and i had another fr i have another friend um well i have a friend that um used to make <laughs> that used to make stop motion animations as uh when he was younger with clay and he'd say it'd take him a while as well yeah, I've actually did, I did a claymation a long time ago back in like sixth grade, but that that because it was like a it was a class assignment, and that that took a long time. So it's just a lot of it depends. I don't remember if he'd make them for school. I don't think he would. I think he'd make them for like his YouTube channel. I've actually never attempted to do something stop motion related, even though I really think it's really cool. I've never attempted to do it. Yeah, I don't blame you really. It's it takes just a, a ton of time and patience, and uh, that that can it can get tedious if you let it, you know. Because something if something doesn't go right, then you gotta go like refilm, you gotta reshoot the entire shot or whatever, and that can definitely be frustrating to say the least. So, um, I don't I don't I don't blame you for not wanting to try it. Well, I don't know if it's that. I wouldn't, like, want to. I guess it's just I've never had the interest in it. Yeah. I like, I, I like, it's a thing that I like watching it um, in videos and such, but I don't think it's a thing I'd ever want to do myself. Now, which animation would you say has taken you the least amount of time, and which one has taken you the most amount of time to make? Uh, let's see. Probably the least amount of time, and the one that I can just think of off the top of my head would be... The uh, Jake Paul, uh, it's Everyday Bro parody that I did like a couple months ago, because that that was that was a really spur of the moment thing, really last minute, um, that I just kind of decided one day to do while while that song was still relevant at the time, and um, I got that done in just a couple hours, and I got that out pretty quickly just that day, and uh, so that was nice. It wasn't really that hard to do, and then the the longest video I've ever worked on would would certainly be um a 50 minute video I did a year ago called Lego Justice League versus the Avengers. And, uh, that, that one took about six months of animation. Probably. I think I worked on that. I think I animated it for about six months, which I mean, not consistently, of course I had other projects that I was doing outside of it, you know, so I was still getting videos out pretty, um, pretty consistently, but, but it still took about six, <laughs> about six months. So, that one, Jesus yeah. Christ like how how long would you work during those six months like every day I don't think I worked on it every day I think it was probably whenever I did work on it it would I, I would work on it for like a couple hours just to get as much done or maybe not even a couple hours just as, as I most of the time when I film stuff I go by scenes or like I'll go by script pages you know because I'll have the script pulled up on Google Docs and then I'll just like be scrolling down on the script and um I'll, I'll be like, oh, okay, I'm going to get this page done today or I'm going to get these two pages done today or whatever. So I'll just go by that. Um, and it really just kind of depends on how long that takes. Sometimes it can take up to an hour or sometimes a couple hours. Um, but most of the time it's, it, it's, it's, I usually don't animate longer than like two to three hours. Cause at that point it just gets like monotonous and you don't even want to work on it at that <laughs> anymore. So you got to take breaks. 
Right. My my dad told me he had a friend, and this was like back in like the 1980s or so, very long time ago, that he made a stop motion animation of like some toys he had, and it took him four months to make it. Wow. How long was it in in the end? Yeah, my dad didn't tell me that, and I didn't ask him that, but he told me the whole process took him four months to make. That's pretty unbelievable. I mean, well, no, I, I believe it. Like, it's stop motion, but yeah, it's just, it, sh- it shows how long things like that can actually take, you know? It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it is, but I guess it's a thing, like, if you enjoy it, uh, I guess it kind of, the whole process pays off in the end if you enjoy it. Yeah, I definitely enjoy it. I, I wouldn't say animation is my favorite thing to do. It's not something I want to pursue as a career. My favorite thing about making videos and stuff is the writing aspect. I've always been interested in like screenwriting and stuff like that and writing scripts. Um, just because I, I like being able to tell a story, like I said earlier, and... um an easy way for me to do that would just be to use stop motion. And when I have all these Legos here, you know, I I can get other people um, to voice act and everything. So right now it's just the most convenient thing to do. So it's not that I love animation, but I'll, I'll do it to like, um, to, to like convey a story of some kind, you know? Right now, what would you say is your favorite and least favorite animation you've made? Um, my favorite, um, probably again, probably the 50 minute one, just because that's the one I'm most proud of. It turned out pretty much the way I wanted it to. Uh, and then my least favorite, um, I'd have to go back. Probably. I did some really bad ones back in the day. Um, I did like, I, I did a lot of, right, not a lot, but I did like three Harry Potter ones. I think two or three that I just, I really hate. I can't even go back and watch them. Uh, again, those are some that I, I, I probably need to, uh, to, to privatize at some point, but those would probably be some of the worst, some of my least favorite ones, at least personally. Right. Yeah. Obviously your first few ones aren't going to be your favorites. I would assume. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all, when we start off on YouTube, we'll put some stuff out that we're, we may not be proud of, you know, but that's okay. It's just, it it it's part of the whole like growing process and everything. You have to you have to put out some stuff that you hate in order to grow from that and get better. So yeah, I started that off with Minecraft Let's Plays. Oh yeah, so you know we we all evolve. It's fine. Now, when do you think you'll hit a hundred k? Uh, that's eh, I don't know. Hopefully soon. I'm at ninety four k right now. I, I think I think ninety ninety three or ninety four. I have to go check. Um. Yeah, 94k right now. So, it just it it'll we'll have to see. Um right now, if I were to guess, probably within the next few months. I don't know. I I I was getting like my my channel's actually because I haven't been uploading as much this like in December and now this month, I'm not getting subscribers as quickly as I was a couple months ago. That's just kind of how it is. You got to keep putting out videos in order to keep getting subs most of the time. So, once I start posting more this year, then I think it'll start to pick back up, and I should be hitting 100k pretty soon, hopefully. But that the, that in and of itself, just hitting 100k or even getting this far, is just incredibly surreal to me. I never imagined that it would like get this big, but I'm incredibly grateful that it has. So yeah, I, I don't think anyone when they start YouTube, they're like, oh, I'm gonna be famous, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's probably good not to start off with that mindset, or else you're gonna be. You know, nine times out of ten, you're going to be really disappointed. <laughs> so, you know, I've, I've met people at my school that are like, oh, I'm just going to become a famous vlogger one day. Like, as a career, it's like that's not something you should just bet on. That's the, the chances of someone getting, like, really successful to the point where you can make a living off of it on YouTube. It, it's it's pretty slim. Yeah, I totally agree. Now, do you have anything planned for 100K? Uh, I'll probably do a special of some kind. I've, I've talked about... I might do like a Q&A or I might do like some sort of like uh, some sort of animation of some kind. I don't know. I haven't really decided yet. Um, I guess we'll just have to have to cross that bridge when we get there. But we'll see. All right. I've got one last question here for you, Jonathan, and then we can conclude it. All right. So what are your plans and goals for this year? Um. Well, I mean, I'd like to grow as... I mean, obviously, as like a person, and and I'd like my channel to grow. Um, I, I'd like to keep doing what I'm doing in terms of animation for as long as I can. 
up until uh, August, you know, I, I want to do it for just as long as possible when it comes to the animation, uh, because I do enjoy doing it, and um, I like writing, and I like, um, I, I do like I'd miss animating if I if I ever stopped when I when I do stop I, I'll I'll miss it. But um, other than that, like I've I've thought about like because like whenever I stop doing animations eventually later this year probably i'd like to do i still like to post stuff on youtube because um i i still love making content that people watch and everything uh i just don't really know what that type of content will be so it's not like when i so when i stop doing animations later this year that that's probably inevitable but that doesn't mean i'm going to like quit doing stuff on my channel um whether that be like you know, I, I've thrown around the idea of maybe starting to do video essay or like commentary type stuff at some point. Um, but but like, I'd like to still keep posting on my channel throughout the course of this next year, whether they be animations or something else. So we'll just have to we'll just have to wait and see. All right. All right. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that. Uh, thank you. All right then. Well, thank you for coming on, Jonathan. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. And, uh, well, that concludes the interview. Thank you for uh, coming to watch it and staying here till the end with us. And I'll see you next one. Take care. Goodbye. But one thing before we go, please do spam that like button. If you enjoyed the interview, consider subscribing, share this video with your family and friends, and leave a comment down below. I'll see you next one. Take care and goodbye.